Excuse me, sir, can I have a moment of your time to talk about humankind? Because, you know, there's actually people outside your room if you ever decide to leave it. I'm just kidding. There's nobody outside. Stay there. Watch this video. I want to thank Amplitude Studios and Sega for sponsoring this video and for giving me early access for the Cultures of Africa DLC that just came out for humankind. So what is humankind, Ludi? Well, thank you for asking, sir. Humankind is actually a fresh take on the strategy genre with a brand new approach to how it works and it is a game that gives you the ability to narrate your own story you can either go linear and full-on historical or you can approach the game in any way that you want to making it your own experience unique with each game that you play humankind just got a super awesome dlc the cultures of africa and i recommend you guys check out the link in the description and grab that dlc as fast as you can because it adds six new awesome cultures one for each age and each of them have unique abilities that spice the world of humankind and make it extremely enjoyable all right so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change our profile picture here we're gonna set up as something a little bit more appropriate i'm gonna try and recreate my favorite actor oh what have i done oh my god <laughs> Look at the way he's looking at me. He's upset that I made him wear a dress. You know what? I think this actually works. There's a ton of different customizable options here. You can choose any of the presets and then you can change them based on whatever you want your character to look like. So you can make it either a female or, oh God, <laughs> a male. You can also change the personality here. You can be cruel, explosive, inspirational, passionate, thoughtful, or vengeful. And you guys know me, so I'm gonna be very thoughtful, okay? Okay. You can change his facial profile and you can see the face moving around every time you hover one of these. Oh, that's cool, man. I wish you could make it so his face always does this, actually. That would be pretty nice. Let's see if we can give him some of my eyebrows over here. Oh, yes. I like this one more. Unibrow. This is the new sexy look, by the way, in case you didn't know. Girls love unibrow. The nose has to be a little bit bigger. You can't see it from perspective, but it's pretty massive, okay? Right, I think this is the biggest one I found found my, for my guy over here. That looks good. That's a lot of haircuts right there. I know you guys already know which character I'm going for. Yes, yes, it is in fact Idris Elba. Does he look like Idris Elba? Yeah, well, I'm not good at making characters, okay? You do a better job than me. Let's see you do it. I think Idris Elba has a beard like mine, doesn't he? Yeah, for sure he does. Change his clothing also. I like this color. And we can save him up, which means we are now the coolest looking character in all of humankind. That is correct. There's nobody that looks cooler than I do. Trust me, because I just said so. Let's go ahead and click on new game. Set up a large map. World shape. Let's go with uh, Pangaea. Pangaea essentially means we have one continent surrounded by water. Continent shape shape chaotic. Ooh, I like this. Let's go with chaotic. Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. Let's go with large Pangaea. Pace. Let's go with normal. End conditions. All empires eliminated. Pollution threshold reached. Mmm, that sounds juicy. And so it begins. We're a nomadic tribe in the Neolithic era. And just look at how amazing the graphics are, man. I love this. And look at this. Whenever we start exploring things, the way it pops out is just absolutely amazing. Our main goal is going to be to discover some new curiosities, as they call them, which in turn can give us a variety of things such as food to grow our tribe, influence to establish outposts, and claim territories in the process, or even gold and other goodies. Oh, would you look at that? Another one popped out over here. Let's see what Full this one's going to give us first. Children. That gave us 15 food, so we're close to getting our second unit. Let's head on over to the other one over here, and maybe we can actually get the second unit super fast. And I was right. We got the second unit now. Nice. That means we can explore in two different directions and get to know the lay of the land around us. Throughout the game, you're going to get some events such as this one, where you get to choose between a few options. In my case here, I can either get a buff on units or I can get a brand new army spawn in. That means we got three armies as it is, getting a lot closer towards an actual horde in the Neolithic era. We've unlocked our era star, which means we can actually choose our first civilization. And there's quite a few of them. We got the Assyrians, Babylonians. The Bantu are a newly added civilization in the latest Cultures of Africa DLC. And I'm actually really curious to see how well these guys perform 
platform. So I'm gonna actually adopt this civilization as my first in-game civilization. I'm also going to establish my first territory in this province here. If you scroll out, you're going to see that you have predefined territories around the map. And by building an outpost, you first off claim the territory. And once that outpost gets turned into a city, you have complete control of that particular area. You can also check what resources each tile offers you by clicking on this button, which essentially turns it on and off whenever you want to. You can do the same with the hexagrid. And we now are part of the ancient era no more nomads we are a full-grown established tribe ready to conquer the world you discovered the breathtaking tongas forest if we scroll out it is actually this entire area here and i want this to be a part of my territory so i'm definitely going to try and claim it one of the features that the bantu people that were recently added has is you don't need to have influence in order to claim new territories you can really quickly claim it by sacrificing four units of bagenti pi Pioneers, or you can still claim with influence but for that you actually need to build a proper warrior unit rather than uh, using your Bagenti units and the outpost just finished building that means we can turn this out into a city by clicking this button it over here and with our first city we have access to proper buildings such as the infrastructure pottery workshop we can click this and queue it up we also can build more Bagenti pioneers if we want to these are the unique unit for our civilization most importantly we now have a steady flow of production money science influence and we have access to the technology screen and yes i had to go on the other side because this is where the tech is we're gonna go and we're gonna get the carpentry first followed by defenses second or domestication depending on how our situation is and if you scroll out you can see now that this territory is completely ours now so i guess that means we have to expand a little bit more don't we we can do our first battle too let's engage this deer in the deployment phase we'll take the upper ground that's gonna give us a bit of a boost to our attack and let's crush this vile deer oh boy it looks like it's actually gonna be crushing us no no we got this we got this boys it's almost dead now and the battle has been won victory at last first victory for the bantu empire and carpentry has been researched so let's go ahead and check what else we can research next there's a pretty big research tree that we have and eventually we'll be able to research all the way into the information era throughout the maps you're actually going to encounter a lot of real life natural wonders such as the danakil desert over here whenever you have control of this you get special bonuses such as for this one influence stability and money on city or outpost within this particular tile so we want to actually rush and make sure that we have this tile claimed by our empire rather than somebody else and we just discovered the egyptians let's see how peaceful they are or not peaceful they asked us to trade resources sure we can do that let's propose an alliance see if that works they did not accept our alliance and we got a crisis from that which we're just going to ignore for the time being we're going to build an army and take them out that's the plan over here okay we've also unlocked the civics let's see our first civics here each empire has a ton of civics to go through throughout its existence and the way that you handle these civics and the path that you take determines what kind of a civilization you you're gonna end up being so for the first civic i'm gonna go for the influence on main plaza that's Why gonna help out so much request? and for the second civic i don't have enough influence right now but once i get the influence i'm gonna make it so i pay 50 percent less to create an outpost so we're gonna use the bantu special ability to claim this territory by sacrificing four units and we're gonna place the second city right over here the adjacent territory to our initial territory we can also create our religion and as our starting to religion branches we can either go down the polytheistic or the shamanistic faiths the shamanistic path is essentially an advanced version of the animism that we start off with polytheism leads down a completely different branch and we're gonna go with polytheism for now our empire has grown we managed to get quite a little bit of territory and up next we can advance to the classical era and we can choose to stay as the bantu if we want to or we can change to a complete 
completely different civilization. We have the Aksumites, Greeks, Carthaginians, Celts, and the Garamantes, which is again a brand new civilization added in the Cultures of Africa DLC. So let's go ahead and adopt the Garamantes, change our culture altogether to these boyos, and get their bonuses, which are actually better for the classical era. The Garamantes special ability, Agrarian, essentially can attract population into your cities from adjacent territories if you need to boost up your population score. This is honestly a really great ability in the classical era when you start actually snowballing the amount of population you get in cities. We also have 250 influence which means we can choose our first wonder. We're gonna go for the pyramids of Giza of course that is gonna help us out with building stuff faster. You cannot claim a second wonder until you finish building the first one so we gotta get to work boys. We've also attached this particular outpost to the capital city which essentially merges the two territories into one territory meaning that our capital essentially doubled in size territorial wise. I always wanted my very own religion and uh, apparently we can even choose the tenants of our religion. I believe the first one to go for obviously would be stability on rivers as stability is a big issue in this game and we have basically built most of our cities next to rivers. And would you look at that we managed to get some swordsmen from one of the discoveries. Well, 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 we even discovered Mount Kilimanjaro, a beautiful mountain in Africa, or in this case, somewhere around Pangaea, because we're one unified continent right now. We're also going to spare some influence points and use these special Bantu units in order to establish this city here in Nihal. Hold on a second, what? The head priest is planning to sacrifice a hundred people for the new monument? No, no, no. We're going to stop that one. Sorry, boyos. I'm not that fanatical about this whole thing, okay? When you hover over the map, you'll realize that aside from the main civil civilizations over here there's also independent peoples as they're called essentially cities that can be conquered or assimilated such as the city of sus with the right amount of influence or the right amount of troops and in the latest cultures of africa dlc they added an extra seven independent peoples and even five natural and cultural wonders like mount kilimanjaro over here the time for us to advance our civilization has arrived again and this time we can choose between even cooler civilizations like the Byzantines, the Franks, the Ghanaians, the Teutons, or we can stay as the Garamantes if we want to. But because I want to explore the newly added content, let's go for Swahili over here that offers us stability on harbors and the Bandari, which is essentially a proper trade building, as well as the Mepete, which is a naval unit specific to the Swahili. Confirmio, the Great Mosque of Gen is also added in the latest DLC and it is pretty good but I'm actually gonna go for the Notre Dame Cathedral let's claim this as our next wonder because I want to get some more faith I'm having issues with my faith as my adjacent opponents have started converting my lands to their particular faith and I don't want that to be the case here Lake Hillier is this a real place why is it purple and would you look at that the second tenant of our religion is here we're gonna go with science we are a scientific religion religion of course. We got our first ship as well so we can start exploring the seas around the world. Oh yeah, that's right, we got stone walls people. Let's see them try and break down my walls now. Well would you look at that, the Nubians have done a surprise attack. Let's see what happens. Oh my god, they got three units next to me and they're swordsmen. I don't even have that researched yet. Oh, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> I need to research swordsmen now. My best bet to just play this defensively. Sadly, I don't have enough troops even if I want to play defensively so there's gonna be a lost battle. Defeat at Nihal, the first defeat of this campaign and I'm pretty sure they're gonna also ransack Nihal afterwards. Time to get an army everyone. Our city is gonna have to switch production from uh, buildings to actual armies. Alright so they actually got two warriors and one spearman that I can see here. I can easily counter that with some proper units. So let's start production of our own spearmen and warriors and we can even push this a little bit by spending some 
money and uh, getting these units faster than we would otherwise. Oh, I see what's happening. I'm actually not at war with the Nubians. I have peace with them. So that was simply just an aggressive act on their part, but they didn't want to do anything else except for kill off my armies in Nihal. That's really interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a game that simulates real life diplomatics like that because, you know, sometimes conflicts like these arise, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be a war between these two particular nations. Once more, we are at war defending our brave outpost from uh, the smelly independent city people over here. Let's go ahead and uh, get the high ground and end deployment. They got chariots and that's pretty nasty because they can completely crush your infantry units. We're going to try and make do with our archers over here and try and take out the chariots from afar before they can actually uh, get to our archers. Oh boy, look at the spearmen kill off the chariot over there. And let's wipe out the other one as well with the archers. Move over here, boyos. Time to attack them from the flank, yo. Flank and wiping, guys. Flank and wiping. It's a new thing. It's a new thing, okay? And spearmen kill off the rest of this chariot. Come on, let's take him out. Booyah shaka, everybody! We won the battle, and that means we completely wiped out those uh, independent boyos. We're gonna station these troops in Xihe, so we can actually defend this better from these areas. This is a border outpost anyway, so we're gonna need defenses against Maya, which is becoming more and more aggressive against us. The medieval age was pretty good to us. We've actually consolidated most of our lands. We have five cities now, and for that matter, I'm actually gonna attach this over here to Sibiu also, which earned me another era star. And speaking of era stars, let's go ahead and uh, go on to the early modern era. We're gonna be choosing the Maasai for the early modern era, which offer the Maasai Morons a special unit that is actually insanely strong and is also a ranged unit that throw their clubs at enemies. The best part is that we get minus 25 population consumption on all cities. For this era, it's actually really important important as it means we're gonna make a huge amount of population to use in the world wars to come. So adopt Skio, confirm Ski. Holy mother of god, 25 upkeep for these boys? That is so expensive, what? I mean, we gotta get at least one unit, right? And the Enkang, which is a specific building that the Maasai have, offers us so much extra food. I'm gonna take advantage of this and I'm gonna start building it right now. 25 extra food by building it over here, that is insane. 33 by building it here, bro, what? That is actually broken. And 55 for building it here. Dude, this is literally overpowered right now. 55 food from one particular building is insane. Excuse me, sir. How dare you come over into my lands without my permission, moguls? Get out of here. And you boys also, what's wrong with you? Let's go into a manual battle and take care of these boys. I'm not cool with them actually attacking my lands like this. What is this? Anarchy or something? Let's crush their go. units. Our units are way better. We actually have swordsmen. They got warriors and pikemen still. We managed to bring our crossbowmen over here, but they're still not super safe. We're probably gonna lose the crossbowmen, but I'm actually okay with it. Now at least I can start shooting with them over the uh, swordsmen, so we can do a boom once. And that's the end of that cavalry unit. And then the second unit's gonna attack this cavalry unit here, Daryago. And we can attack the pikemen from the flank. Kalas, we have finished those cavalry units, and we will also kill off the rest of the pikemen. Daryago, boys, we won yet another battle for the Great Maasai Empire. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna declare war on the new. They've actually attacked me a couple of times. I really want to get rid of their city on my border here, namely uh, Worms. We can also upgrade our units to Great Swordsmen. So we got way better units than they got. 35 damage, 43 from the Maasai units, and 31 from the pikemen. Get the schnapples out of my lands, okay? Worms will be ours. Manual battle for the Siege of Worms. And deployment. And let's do it. Look at that. They gave me 18 damage, but they took, what, 30? They lost 53, and I lost 18 And that one battle. They're losing this massively. 37 for them and 6 for me. And now it's our turn, so let's actually crush them. Final touch. Killing off these boys once and for all. 
Booyah doom doom. I like the fact that whilst these battles are happening, I can actually do other things around my empire. I don't need to just stick with that battle and see what's happening there. So if I want to, I can set it as an automatic battle and then I'm just doing whatever I want whilst the troops are fighting by themselves. Let's attack with the swordsmen, the ones defending the actual city. And pikemen, you can give the final blow for these clubmen over here. We won that battle. That means the city of worms is now ours. Let's make sure we also upgrade all of our units to great swordsmen whilst we're at it. Oh, would you look at that? If it's not a small trade center that can give us a thousand five hundred gold if we ransack it and make the poles angry, but who cares about the poles being angry, okay? Looks like we're gonna have a pretty big battle at this mountain pass. Let's call it the Battle of Thermopylae. <laughs> and we seem to have stronger units than them, so they actually retreated. Oh, I was looking forward for a battle, man. We're gonna chase him down. I actually want to kill him off. I don't want him to merge with the rest of their armies over here. And it looks like they do want to fight us, so let's go ahead and do a manual battle again. Let's start with our swordsmen attacking their swordsmen. We'll make sure that we hold our ground with our pikemen. Attack again with the swordsmen. And we crush their unit right there. Noise. Let's bring our pikemen closer so we can actually attack their cavalry units. And the pikes do a massive amount of damage to those cavalry units, so that's great. Oh, look at this, boys. Because we have the upper ground, we're gonna do so much damage to their swordsmen. Even though we're attacking with the pikemen, we actually took out that entire unit right there. And with this, we can also kill off the other archers that they have as well. And let's actually take their flag now with the uh, pikemen. Attack with the Messiah a second time. Noise 55 damage. Bring the other Messiah here and essentially wipe them out completely after we attack. Hot diggity dog. We completely wiped them out and we won. Time for another battle against the Nubians over here. The Nubians are about to lose their war support. Amazing. I'm happy to hear that. Let's go ahead and uh, deal the final strike against them, shall we? Manual battle. Booyah shakalo. Dead ski cavalry ski yo. And now our swordsmen are going to do the final blow against these archers over here or crossbowmen better yet let's see if they're willing to actually piece us out maybe we can actually take a few places from them yep i think we can actually piece them out get worms and the rest of the war support here is going to turn into war reparations for surrender and dariago worms is officially our sixth city which actually means we're over the city capacity for a little while we're actually going to have to build this district here to improve the amount of stability we got because right now we have 15 which means this city is going to rebel if we don't increase that stability anytime soon. Hey guys, look at this. The Mexicans actually converted to my religion, Bantu polytheism, and they're following it in most of their cities right now. I'm a very, very happy boy, let's say. Hey, would you look at that, guys? We got another seven era starts. So we can continue our adventure as the Ethiopians, the African Empire, with the coolest fashion trends. I mean, look at this guy over here. The cool part about the Ethiopians is they got the Amba, which is essentially a fortress that both give you fortification and stability as well as science if you garrison it so this thing is actually insanely overpowered and the really nice part is you can actually build it on top of mountains i think this is what i'm gonna be going for right now i need to get arquebusiers so i can advance all of my units and have proper armies for the wars to come i am a little bit worried there's a pretty big army here heading towards me and they already have gunpowder unlocked i don't have gunpowder gunpowder unlocked yet okay they were just passing through we're fine everyone we're not getting surprise attacked by these boys anytime soon the mongols want to have an alliance with me you know what sure yes, let's I sign our first piece. alliance treaty in this particular game okay i see what's happening i actually was getting attacked they got 14 units at my capital i did not see this coming i did not see this coming at all all right let's go with the manual battle i guess we have to actually defend our capital now boys very very sneaky of them not gonna lie very sneaky holy mother of god they really have a lot of units don't they we're gonna get some reinforcements from the adjacent cities after this battle is finished here let's actually start marching our units from uh, uh, here all the way to the capital because we're gonna need to defend the capital more than anything else they actually want us to convert to their religion these are their demands oh you nasty brazilian broos i'm gonna continue the battle i'm not just gonna give up like that and i lost that battle which means i lost my capital bro what wow you know what I'm gonna bite my lip on this one and I'm actually gonna make a peace with these boys, offer surrender, convert to their religion, they agreed to the terms, they gave me back my capital, 
end of the war with the Brazilians. Feels bad, man. But we learned a valuable lesson, guys. Don't trust the Brazilians. Build a big-ass army, and we're gonna crush them. That's, that's the end goal right here. Also, expect the unexpected, and the AI is actually quite surprisingly strong and smart, because I did not see this coming at all. In fact, they had really good relations with me right until the moment that they actually declared the war. So they really were actually planning this. Skipping a bit into the future and guess who's gonna get his revenge? It's this guy. We just got flintlock rifles and we upgraded most of our units to flintlock musketeers. Which means we're gonna actually crush the Brazilians here. Let's go to our diplomatic tab. There you go. They're actually super okay with us as they were before their smelly surprise attack. Super friendly, pretendio, etc., etc. Go schnapple yourself. Go schnapple yourself, Brazil. There you go. Declare war. Let's attack Ski. We're gonna crush these bastards. Make them pay. I want their capital to be mine. Hot diggity dog. What is this? You think you can mess with me? There you go. We got 985 against their 200 something. Let's uh, assault it. Instant resolution, and we got their capital. Booyah Shaka even unlocked an era star from that. It's a payback time, boys. It's a payback time. Oh, would you look at that? We even got carbines research. Trying to hide away in Harappa? Cannot let you do that. I'm afraid Harappa is also property of our mighty nation to pay for your transgressions. And this is also the perfect time to switch to the last civilization. The Nigerians that offer us the oil refinery. Finery. Nice try trying to get out of here, but it's not gonna work, boyos. Assault ski, instant resolution, victory again, close to victory in war. Well, that makes sense, considering we basically took half of their country out. You know what? I'm gonna ask you to give me Mohenjo-Daro, Hyruin, and Utanla. There you go. You agree with those terms? Well, the Brazilians agreed to my peace terms. With the Brazilian capital under our command now, we have complete domination here, and there's literally nobody else that can even defy us at any point if we get 5,000 likes on this video we're also gonna do another humankind video where we explore the European cultures and if you want to download the new cultures of Africa DLC you will find all the links in the description below you can get it on Steam Epic Store and even on the Microsoft Store and you have individual links for all of those platforms so I'll see you guys in the next one and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters I really wouldn't be able to do this with without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.